Welcome, it's Facts You Don't Know. If it's your first time here and you want to find out new facts that will definitely make you smarter and more. Well, and for to make sure to subscribe and active the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Esteban was a middle-class young man who, from a very young age, had proposed to surpass himself and not allow any obstacle to prevent him from fulfilling his aspirations. At the end of high school, he went to a very good university, medical school, to evaluate the health care career options that he might choose. For this was the area of study of which he felt great vocation. Despite not being his first choice, he chose physiotherapy, since, compared to the others, it was much more affordable economically. His purpose as a human being was to help others, heal them, and improve their quality of life, something that a physical therapist he would have the ability to do. Steadfast in his unwavering determination, he faced a tough road full of constant difficulties, which he overcame with dedication, optimism, and effort. From the beginning, he organized his schedule in such a way that he could work part-time and with it cover all the expenses that would come. Repeatedly, he had to choose between eating or paying for college. A very difficult decision, but he knew that the sacrifice would be worth it. Esteban celebrated full of happiness obtaining his title, although many thought that happiness would collapse when he was faced with the harsh reality of the savage competition of the labor field, which was even more voracious than what he had just overcome. He did not allow himself to succumb at any time. After handing out multiple resumes at different hospitals and rehabilitation centers without receiving any response, he decided to resume his job as a valet parking, but this time full-time, so he could subsist while he waited patiently for the opportunity to pursue the profession he had so lovingly chosen. A little over a month had passed when the longed-for day arrived. Finally, one of the centers where he had left his curriculum summary had hired him as a substitute for a couple of months to then evaluate the possibility of leaving him as permanent staff. Upon arriving at the spinal cord injury area, which was the one he'd been assigned, with the best of spirits, he began to evaluate the cases of the patients he'd attended to. In the room, a great laziness reigned. The rest of his colleagues worked reluctantly and treated human beings in therapy as if they were objects rather than human beings. Such a situation motivated him to do his work more efficiently and to be empathetic not only to those he attended, but with everyone he came there. They'll never hire us as regular people, asserted one of his companions. We're not supplying anyone. That's nothing more than a strategy to justify why they pay us so little and replace us so easily. This place is enriched by hiring recent graduates as substitutes who they do without when they get a new batch. And so they never pay anyone with all the requirements of the law. That's the reason for our reluctance, he explained. Esteban only nodded. Although that was not at all encouraging from his perspective, it was not a strong argument to support that they all perform so poorly. The reason why a person had to do their job with care, affection, and efficiency was not the money they were going to receive for it, nor the time they would last there, but the love and passion they have for the profession they dedicated to carry out, even more so in a work area as delicate and beautiful as that in the health sector. As the days passed, the young physiotherapist developed a special interest in an old man, who'd been left in a wheelchair and was taken daily by his caregiver to his therapy. At the time he'd been there, the Lord had not shown any progress. So depressed that his mental and emotional state were those that did not allow his body to react to the stimuli he received with his treatment plan. Esteban decided to change patients with a partner and be the one to take on the case. With his great patience and charisma, he was little by little breaking the ice with Remigio. That was the name of that man, who ended up telling him that during his youth he was an outstanding ping-pong player and had won numerous international awards. This gave a great idea to the young physiotherapist who, after managing to get a table that suited Remigio's condition, with the help of the other patients who were interested in his proposal, taught him a series of techniques with which he could recondition his body to be able to resume his beloved sport while in his wheelchair. The therapy was a success. Both his attitude and physical condition began to improve by leaps and bounds. Laughter from Remigio and his other playmates flooded that center. Esteban could not feel more than satisfied and proud. The joy of him did not fit in his chest, seeing his patient's progress and smile like that. The day he was notified that his services were no longer required was the first time he'd felt this heart in a long time. More than the loss of income, it was the fact that he could no longer attend to his dear patients, and especially Remigio.
which broke his soul into pieces. Back in valet parking, he didn't even bother to withdraw the money owed to him to his months of work. Twice a week, he replaced Remigio's nurse and took him to the center himself to be able to share with him and help him in his new sessions. One day, he asked him if he had time to review the sports bag that his nurse had sent him as a token of his appreciation weeks ago. He, very sorry, confessed that he did not. He knew that because of how heavy he had to bring more things inside, but he'd been so busy that he completely forgot to open it. Esteban couldn't believe what his eyes saw. The briefcase was full of money. When he met Remigio again, he explained that he was a multimillionaire and that it did not represent even a quarter of his fortune. No person had shown such concern for him in decades, so that reward seemed the most fair to him. The physiotherapist flatly refused to receive it, but he insisted so much that he ended up accepting it on the sole condition that he would use all that money to buy the rehabilitation center and thus ensure that it provided a quality service with a staff truly dedicated to his vocation. The path to success and improvement will always be determined by love, passion, perseverance, and dedication that propel us towards our goals. Passion stands out among the qualities and talents that contribute to success. Passion, unlike talent, experience, or other considerations, is inherent. It cannot be taught or gained, but it's still there. The one thing that unites all successful individuals in equal measure is passion, or an intense desire to achieve one's goals. Hard work, ambition, and imagination are fueled by passion, and amazing successes are made possible by it. Successful novelists, film directors, physicists, CEOs, world-class athletes, and other individuals that have risen to the top of their fields all have a profound passion that drives them to work very hard, even though they don't know how, when, or whether they'll be rewarded for their efforts. Recruiters must be able to consistently distinguish genuinely passionate candidates, and passion cannot be taught or faked. This is a difficult challenge, particularly for people who are enthusiastic about having a job, cannot be enthusiastic about doing it until they have it. However, being able to recognize true enthusiasm is crucial to being able to recruit the right applicants. Passion is described as a person's willingness and ability to go beyond the call of duty in order to produce exceptional results. Employees who are excited about their jobs clearly add more to their employers. A person's potential performance is often determined by their level of passion. Even if a candidate's resume checks all the right boxes, good college, appropriate experience, compatible personality, a lack of a real zeal will quickly lead to an average or even below average recruit. The disparity in ROI between mediocre and fantastic hires will add up to a lot of money, up to a million dollars over the lifetime of an employee's career at a firm, according to some figures. These are huge stakes by every standard. Despite its relevance, defining passion is a challenging task. Trying to find out what motivates you is similar to trying to figure out what motivates you. The key is to figure out why rather than what. What motivated someone to do what they did? Is a person driven by wealth, a sense of accomplishment, or something else entirely? It's possible for someone to succeed while they're tasked with solving difficult problems, or on working as part of a squad or in assisting others. Finding the answers to these questions will assist a recruiter in determining how well an applicant fits into a company. If a recruiter accurately recognizes 90% of the core qualities required to succeed in a position in a candidate, if the job is offered to someone who lacks enough enthusiasm for it, the outcome could always be a poor hire, even if the candidate has the official credentials. So beginning with the right questions, recruiters can figure out whose interests are more predictive of performance in different positions. Ask applicants about their priorities as early as the phone screen to see what motivates them. Are they more individualistic or team-oriented? Do they think in terms of the long run or the short run? When it comes to job, what's important to them? What motivates them to get out of bed in the morning? What brings them pleasure? The answers an applicant gives to these questions will reveal a lot about how he or she can fit into the organization's work culture and goals. The word passion comes from the Latin word pati, which means to suffer or to survive. The sense of passion has changed dramatically over the years. However, one persistent factor is the notion that it necessitates a certain amount of patience. Work is never easy. When things get rough at work, you have to be able to grit your teeth, dig deep, and sweat it out. It also entails not giving up because anything does not go as planned as anticipated. Another explanation why passion is a desirable quality for ambitious candidates 
is that it will help people overcome these obstacles. Regardless of an individual's industry, career path, or level of talent, he or she may eventually struggle at some point and will not find success for years. The road to victory is more zigzag than linear, and a candidate's ability to endure, benefit from, and resolve defeats will decide how well he or she does. Steffi Graf, for example, competed in professional tennis for almost five seasons before winning the first of her 22 Grand Slam titles, an accomplishment she would not have achieved if she had responded poorly to losing. It's crucial to figure out how candidates respond to defeat in order to figure out how resilient they are. People who assess and respond to loss are more likely to use it as an opportunity to learn and develop. However, people who don't think enough about why they're doing what they're doing in the first place will find it difficult to react positively to disappointment. The drive to learn, try again, and do well the next time is fueled by passion. Very well, my friends. We've reached the end of today's story. We hope it's been to your liking. We invite you to give us a like, leave us a comment, share on your social networks, subscribe to our channel, and activate the bell so that you're always notified when we have a new video and don't miss our stories. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.